Okay, here we are back with the 1992 Toyota Hilux. And uh, the job today of uh, the next couple of days is to replace the rear differential from the uh, factory limited slip, which is denoted by this tag on the, on the diff right here. If you have limited slip, you'll probably have this tag here, which says LSD right on the, on the pumpkin. So the job is to take out the LSD diff because the clutches are pretty much shot and they say the clutches on these Toyota Hiluxes and 4Runners and such only last for about 40,000 kilometers. So they're notoriously um, weak, uh, limited slip uh, clutch packs. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to drop in an Eaton uh, True Track rear end. Uh, it's already been shipped. It cost me 800 Canadian to get it. And uh, i got to go pick it up. So the first stage of the job is to get this... Uh, this uh, third member out of here, which comes out from the other side. I drain the fluid from here. So to take out this third member, so I got to drop the drive shaft. Uh, take out all these bolts here. Drain all the fluid out first. Take the third member out, and once I get to that point, I will be done for tonight. Okay, I got the tires, wheels ready to come off. Okay, so uh, tires are off, Chuck, truck's jacked up, diff fluid's draining out, and uh, just going to take off these uh, axles. Everybody's probably seen this, but I'm doing it for my own uh, information. This way if something goes wrong, I can always look at the video and see how it went back together. So you take the clips out for the uh, emergency brake. It's good to have a little container to put all these pieces in. That's that little clip. Looks like that. You should get these a spray while you're in here. This is, there's a wavy washer in there also in the pin. This then comes off, goes to the side. The four nuts are loose. I've loosened them already. I hold everything together back here. Okay, so um, the four nuts are loose on the back here. One, two, three, four. And I suggest you get a proper uh, flare fitting type wrench for taking off the brake lines. In this case, it's a 10 millimeter. And then if you get yourself some of these little rubber plugs like this, when you take the brake line off, you can cap it off with a rubber plug and you can also cap off the cylinder with one of these rubber plugs also. So this is ready to pull out. Four bolts are out. Uh, emergency brake cable's off. Fluid is drained out. I'm gonna just get a rag in case some drips on the floor. Okay, got the rag down here. I'm gonna crack this brake line. Okay, it's uh, it's pretty good, pretty loose. I'll back the fitting all the way off, out of the way. Okay, it's dripping fluid already. So be careful not to damage the seal. Get ready with your plug. Try not to damage the axle seal right there. Plug this off. Oh, keep that up. Just plug this off. Okay, that's plugged. The other plug will uh, should go in there if I get the right size. You can thread a plug in. Rubber plug. Okay. It's very stinky. Okay, now I can flip upside down, doesn't matter. We've got the plug in. Careful not to damage your seal. Take out the shaft. There you go. Okay, 
There's the axle shaft, one of them out. Wipe all the goop off. This is you don't That's it. One side is done. There's the plug on the brake line. There's the plug in the other part. Just threaded it in lightly. And I've got two plugs left over for the other side when I do it. Okay, I'm now just getting the drive shaft off. Kind of rusty. Not bad. Almost no rust on this old girl for being a 92. I don't think I've ever had this off before. Yeah, I could off. Okay, all the bolts are out. Now I just gotta knock it free a little bit. And. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so I broke this free. I'm just gonna take it out. I put a piece of padding on the ground and a piece of cardboard. I don't want it to hit on the concrete. I'm not too sure how heavy it's gonna be. That's pretty heavy. Oh, I think the cardboard was there. Okay, and that's it, it's out. And there it is, and there's the empty hole. This is the third member. We'll just pull it open underneath here. Okay, so I pulled it out where I can look at it, and I haven't done anything yet except had a quick look. And the first thing I see right off the bat is a tooth, half a tooth missing. That's not good. So if I turn it, Oh, that's the same one. Well, I don't know when that happened. So I guess I have to buy a new ring gear now. Oh, boy. Well, it's a good thing I took it apart and found that. Okay, we're back with the uh, the 92 Hilux. It's been a couple of, it's been about a week. I got all my parts ordered up. And we're going to just check the backlash uh, on the old one. This is the old one with the broken tooth on it. I showed you and we'll just check the backlash here and so that's sitting at zero and now that's at uh, eight zero eight so we're getting it's got about eight thou of backlash right now before I touch anything so which is kind of odd to me because it seemed to have a lot more backlash uh, with the uh, drive shaft, so we'll just check a few things out here Okay, so I punched my uh, my things here. I got two dots on this one two dots on this one And I got one dot on this one and one dot on this one so I can take these off now It's some everybody says it's important that you mark these before you take them off So they go on the right way around and they're both marks are on the top This is the top of the, the diff so I'll get rid of some stuff here Okay, so I took off the little uh, fingers here. There was one here. And one on the other side. Now I've loosened these off. So I'm going to try taking this apart. Okay. Okay, and there it is. Out. Okay, and for my job, I'm replacing this whole piece, um, including the ring gear, the pinion gear, 
this is going to be the uh, tree track, new bearings, new everything, because this tooth right here, if you can see that, this tooth right here got cut off or broken off or whatever right there. So I don't know where the metal parts went. I couldn't find the piece anywhere. And uh, that's, an, that's a shame because uh, the backlash is all good. It looks like everything's good. So this is an LSD rear end. This is a G285. It's got the clutch packs in both sides. And they were kind of weak. So I um, decided to go with the, uh, the Eaton True Track rear end instead. So I'm going to uh, put this aside for now. Right there. And we'll see about taking out the uh, internal parts of this guy next. So that's going to be the pinion. Now I still don't see any parts. I wondered if I might see the pieces from the broken tooth, but I still don't see anything. Yeah, I don't see it. The gears don't, these gears don't look like they're damaged too badly. Um, but there was a lot of metal flake that came out with the oil, so I guess it got ground up in here or something. It's interesting to see that this is an oil passage from the top and comes out the bottom here. I wonder if maybe I'll find the part in there. Stuck in there somewhere. I don't, unless it's stuck in here somewhere, I don't know, but anyhow. That's the plan. So this is going to be the part that's going to replace that. Like so. I'll have to get the new bearings pressed on. Or I'm going to press the new bearings on. And uh, this is a neat and true track. Unfortunately what I don't like is what it says here. If you can read it. If the camera would zoom in. It's upside down. It says made in Taiwan. So, I was just assumed that these would be made in the States or Canada or North America somewhere. However, they were made in Taiwan, so all I can do is hope the quality is there. I'm sure it will be, uh, with any luck. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll get busy starting to change this out. Okay, put the nut on upside down so I can bang on this without damaging the threads and I'm just gonna okay I got the nut back off now we'll just see if this oh yeah it just comes right out okay so you don't really need a press for that I don't think people are saying you should do the press for that so there's the crush sleeve then I'm going to use a crush sleeve eliminator kit. So I won't use a crush sleeve on the new one that I get. Uh, we'll see how that works. But um, I still don't see any shards of metal or missing pieces here. So, yeah, who knows where they went. Just got munched up, I guess. Okay, I just want to record all this as I take it apart so that um, if anything happens when I'm putting it back together, I can refer back to this video. So this is the crush sleeve. Just going to come off. This bearing is stuck on here. That's just going to go there for now. Uh, I have a bearing separator. I see there's a big spacer in here. Quite a large spacer, so maybe that's what I need to uh, for the new when I get the new pinion, new pinion and ring gear. Which are coming from Yukon Gears. So now I'm going to try to knock out these, this seal. Okay, we're just going to pull the old seal out. It's pretty rusty on top, but it's coming. Uh, it's very rusty, unfortunately. That sucks. Even though it's a bit leaky. There's what's left of the old seal. Yeah, 
It does, it's not rusty on the inside though. Just a good fit. There's the two parts. There was a rubber there and the rubber was completely shot. So that's garbage. Well, I'll just keep it here for now. Okay. And then there's the oil slinger here and the bearing. So there's this oil slinger plate. Goes on top of the bearing. Keep the orientation right, I guess, or I'm going to anyways. I don't know if it has an orientation, but I'll just make sure I don't mix it up. SK bearings. Bearings are okay. What? Get on the bearings. Nice there. And then I'll get these races out of here next. Okay, next we're just going to pop the races out. And that goes with that guy. Then we'll flip it over and get the other one. And there's the other one right there. Okay, that's the other one. And that goes with. That one like so. so. That's how everything came off. Okay, now we have an empty differential housing. Ready for the new parts. Okay, so I want to pull this bearing off and uh, I don't have uh, the splitter I have won't fit. The splitter doesn't want to go in there. So I'm going to try something else. So we turn this into a two legged puller. And I will be able to pull on the outer race. Uh, that bearing's no good anyways. So if it gets destroyed, I don't care. Okay, now we've got a nice long puller leg. Okay, while I was just messing around with some uh, cleaning some stuff up, I found the missing piece. 
There it is. Okay, so first I took the pullers and I, I ripped off the uh, outer race and all the bearings. Then I took the torch. I've got two, two pullers, two uh, bearing separators here. I got a big one and I got a littler one. <clears throat> I took the torch and heated up the uh, race that's stuck. Put this one on. Okay, but I stopped, uh, I got the bearing to, uh, for the outer race with this heat to move up uh, quite a bit, but I quit because there's a spacer in there that I don't want to damage with this. So now I'm going to switch to the bigger one and maybe I can get it to move a bit more. Okay. Okay, I'm going to heat up the... Uh, the race a little bit more since it cooled off. Let me try that. I don't want to damage the spacer, and I think I'm starting to yeah I'm just starting to hit it so I'm gonna stop there okay so I can't quite fit the uh, the fingers in the gap but I see there's screw holes here for putting in a puller however I'd need really long long ready rod or something I don't have that either so I'm gonna take the puller I disassembled it three-legged puller I'm gonna make it a two-legged puller and I'm going to uh, combine two pullers in one to extend the legs. I think it should work. What size goes on top? Got some stress on it. Try that. Wrecking my wrecking my puller. It's almost off though. Let's see if I can straighten it out and try it again. Okay, I had to straighten my puller out so it pulls straight rather than on an angle. So there it is. Ugly piece. And the piece I didn't want to damage was this shim right here. A special thickness shim that's got I gotta save I can't damage since I'm not reusing this pinion I want to save this shim mission accomplished a little bit of heat from a torch Frankensteining some pullers and it all works no grinding with a grinder the trouble is if you grind this off with a grinder you can see how thick it is. If you nick this shaft with a grinder, you're going to create a weak spot. You can't nick this shaft. You can use a grinder, but lots of people do. They'll grind this almost through to this, but not quite. Then take a cold chisel and snap it, snap it or whatever, and it comes off. But if you damage this piece, you might as well throw this away. So I prefer not to do that. It's not even too hot. I just had to get it. It's cooled off now, but warm enough to move. Four different pullers involved, but it came off.